Valley. A social experiment. A suburb virtually created overnight. Once upon a time, a young film director and sometime actor turned his spotlight on the foibles of television. Green Valley. Made on the cheap for the Film Australia, Peter Weir's wicked little satire sent up what he saw as media manipulation. Is there anything else that you'd like to tell us? <laughs> I know sometimes the load seems very heavy, even in my work. <laughs> Twenty-five years later, that struggling filmmaker is now one of the most famous directors in the world, with a string of box office hits and the budget to return to a cherished theme. It's a dark period. There are big questions about media, um, and the film touched on some of these aspects. Peter Weir was facing the cameras again, this time at the Venice Film Festival, to launch his new film, The Truman Show. It's all about a man whose whole life is a TV show, except he doesn't know it. 220 countries tuned in for his first step, and as he grew, so did the technology. An entire human life recorded on an intricate network of hidden cameras and broadcast live and unedited 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to an audience around the globe. Coming to you now from Sea Haven Island, enclosed in the largest studio ever constructed, it's the Truman Show! Truman is being watched all the time by yeah. 5,000 cameras. Right. Do you think that's what we've come to, or that's where we're going? I think so. I mean, look, they just put them on the buses, didn't they, in Sydney? And uh, I can't go into a hotel these days without just automatically checking where the cameras are, which are generally concealed in a hotel because they don't want to make you self-conscious. On the other hand, they therefore become concealed. So in an elevator now, I can pick that little bit of smoked plastic or something beside the, the buttons you press, or I know that that little fixture just beside the lamp on the ceiling is really a camera. And it's another beautiful day in paradise, folks, but don't forget to buckle up out there in Radio Land. Radio Jim Land Carey Land plays Land Truman Land Burbank, Land whose every Land moment Land is Land captured Land on Land camera. Land Jim Carey knows all about that. He's been fodder for the Hollywood tabloids for years. This media thing can get out of control and go crazy. It is, look. Yeah, but that's cool. I mean, it's like the uh -oh. movie continues. The movie continues. In that sense, is your life a lot like Truman Burbank's? Um, yeah, it, it gets that way at times, I suppose. Sometimes it's, uh, it's not my choice. I mean, I... I feel like people, there's, I'm a commodity, I suppose, to them, and, and that's that. Would you like to use this set in a film? <laughs> yeah. Well, this is a Truman Show. When you look around Venice, it is like the Truman Show. There are cameras pointing at cameras, pointing at cameras. It is, yeah. You wonder if anybody really looks at anything, or whether they go home and look at their dailies, you know, their rushes. In Venice, you do begin to notice it's not just the stars who are in the movies. This ancient city has become a modern film set. There are more than 5,000 cameras here, and everybody is an extra in somebody else's movie. Jeff's doing cutaways. I wasn't really answering that. <laughs> Just part of the business. Of course, film directors, more than any of us, start to see the world around them as a movie. Here's a good shot. <laughs> there's always something to see in Venice. There's always an odd side. And you're always directing. There's another one, look. Right. A floating city that towers above Venice. And I had that sort of flash the other night that you could make a city by joining about 20 of those things together, welding them together and floating them somewhere and they'll... But you might get Titanic. <laughs> yeah, that's right, yeah. Peter Weir's latest movie set was the real Florida town of Seaside. If this film is a masterpiece, as many critics are saying, it's a wonderful case of art imitating life. Everything looks perfect. Just as in Truman's world, everyone knows their place. 
because here everything is controlled by Christoph, the great director in the sky. Fade up music. to play Christoph yourself? I was in a curious way. I haven't done anything since um, my early short films, but I had to think as Christoph. Do you enjoy the total power? Do you enjoy being Christoph when you're making a movie? Cut. <laughs> a cut. Cue Is anyone cut? <laughs> no, they're not listening. <laughs> uh, no, okay. Um, well, I tell you what I did enjoy. Uh, I don't think of it in those terms, but of course I do have the total power on the set, like the captain of a ship. Give me some light. Peter Weir sees the television audience lapping up everything it's fed, especially if it's reality served up as entertainment. You can do it! Hold on! Do you think that people in the television audience are savvy to the formulas and the fakery that's going on, that they know this is an unreal world, even this maybe? No, I don't think so. Uh, for a lot of people. Um, I think you saw that with the tragedy of Lady Diana. Uh, you know, the paparazzi were working for that audience. They were, in a sense, employed by them, uh, going out to get the very pictures and moving and stills that the, the audience, uh, the folks love. Yet the folks were outraged at the paparazzi. Didn't they know that they were the ones who were driving her, you know, to her death, in a sense, by buying and watching the stuff? His worldwide success now means the famous director also has become the star of the Peter Weir show. It's the essential tool of his trade, but he's come to see the camera as an instrument of intrusion. There's um, the, a kind of internet um, site where the guys who contributed to it have developed, you know, a sort of some sort of walking stick with a little tiny camera on the end of it, and they shoot up girls' dresses. So they'll get on uh, escalators or walk down the street because the victims never know. I mean, how you don't recognise yourself, for, I guess, from that angle. And they'll cut it all together and, you know, in different cities, they're swapping this underskirt camera shots. Can you imagine that? You know? It's like this Jenny Cam, this woman who has a camera that, still camera in a bedroom, college student, you know, she's in her 20s. She, one frame is taken every two minutes. She's going to do it till the day she dies. So occasionally, you'll see her take her clothes off, once a day. You know, men mainly watch this thing with fascination because you might see the real thing, you know, which is what? A real naked human being. Let's get off this mask, John. I can't see his face. Throw to the cabin cam. Cabin cam. There, perfect. That's our hero shot. Let me take a risk, then. What? Is 60 Minutes authentic or can we at our worst be as contrived as the Truman Show? Oh, you know, yes you can. I, think. I mean, you'd know yourself, shows were, which were, you know, in some sort of a way a kind of exploitation on some degree or other. Uh, I, I don't think, I think the same is true of movies, you know, so it's my profession too. You try and keep checks on yourself, you know, you've told me of stories that you've held back from because you didn't have enough factual information. Um, and I think that really, probably, it's the news that's the most disturbing in the world. I mean, recently I was in LA when a terrible li um, live television, during the cartoon hour, in fact, a man committed suicide, blew his head off with a shotgun. And, you know, I was glad I hadn't seen it when someone said, did you see that yesterday? And I said, no, fortunately, I don't have it in my mind. Well, there's some kind of a, a belief that goes back some years, maybe to the Vietnam War even, where the camera was an instrument of truth. But in fact, of course, the truth is, is a lot more than a camera, because the camera also implies an editor, you know, who cuts from what to what. You know, that's the control. You can, you can make anyone out to be a fool. I mean, who knows how you'll cut this? <laughs> <laughs> Having turned the spotlight on the media, Peter Weir now has to endure the spotlight himself. It's only just on 
that opening night that you really sweat. Because as you know, these days it's, you can be you know, um, alive or dead by the end of Friday night, let alone Sunday night. As the director, you've got that fantastic control and power, but you've also got millions of dollars at stake and responsibility on your hands. Does that end up being a, a heaven for you or a hell for you? Well, it's, I think, you know, it's all relative. It's like my first film, I didn't have enough money, you know, when I had $240,000 to make a film. And in this case, 60 million plus wasn't enough. I believe Truman is the first child to have been legally adopted by a corporation. That's correct. Brilliant. The Truman Show has already grossed a fortune, a quarter of a billion dollars and rising. But for the man behind the camera, movies have never been about just making money. The Peter Weir Show is always a journey of the imagination. Is your own head full of such wonderful dreams? I mean, uh, yeah, in between going to the supermarket, <laughs> you know, sort of getting the car clean or something, uh, you'd live the ordinary life. But in between, yes, I mean, I, I'm, you know, I was one of those kids that was a dreamer, a bit of a dreamer, and had one of those long childhoods devoid of stimulation and entertainment other than what you created yourself, always in the water, uh, living around Sydney or down in the park or in the yard, you know, hours and hours and hours of it, like another life stimulated the imagination and yeah you, you have it all your life cue the sign i've been staring at the clock here and uh, it's a lot easier to end 60 minutes your 15 minutes of fame than it is on the truman show do you want to cue the moon or cue the <laughs> clock no i think i'll just say that magic three-letter word Hitchcock, by the way, didn't say action, but he did say the most important word, cut. What else is on? Yeah, let's see what else is on. Where's the TV guy?